It's a momentous occasion today to bring Kalani Satake in as the new football coach at BYU. And I am so excited for this day, Kalani, to be able to name a new football coach that has been a player in this program, that understands and knows BYU football. It's been an incredible experience today to see the boys back. So many of our players are here in the room today to uh, welcome back uh, Kalani and uh, to bring back that BYU football pride. We're so excited for this man. He's in a tremendous football coach, but I've known him for a long time. And each and every time that I see him and talk to him, the one thing that comes out as most apparent is his humility. He's a great man. And we have young men in this football program. And we're so excited to be able to put Kalani with these young men. BYU is a great, great place. Having played football here myself with him, we see eye to eye. We haven't been together very many days. And we talk about things as if we were teammates in the same backfield. So I look forward to the opportunity to be with Kalani and to look forward to the future of the BYU football program. This is a leader right here. In talking with him, to listen to the way that he communicates with players is so exciting. In the short time that we've been together and since he's been named the coach, it's been great to see him on the phone talking to recruits already. This is his thing. And to be able to be talking with our current players and our staff members. Today, when we walked into the building, there were a few people that were around because school's out, there's no players around. And there were a few people in the building that were, I think, just kind of trying to stay warm. And Kalani walked up to him like they were players on the team and uh, put his arm around him and introduced himself. I'm Kalani. Uh, it's not Coach Satake, it's Kalani. And those people looked up at him like, I don't know who that guy is, but I like him. <laughs> and I do too. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Kalani Satake. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's great to be back. Um, I've enjoyed my journey the last 15 years, and it's great to be back home. Um, before I start, I want to thank President Worthen and Tom Homo uh, for believing in me and sharing my vision in this program, BYU. Um, you know, this is, this is uh, overwhelming for me. I mean, I, I feel the love and support from so many different people, and uh, I'm honored to be in this position. And... Um, and it's humbling for me, but I am excited about it, I'm passionate about the, the opportunity. I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, we have a lot of, we have a lot of really good, talented, um, driven, outstanding young men on this team. And uh, looking forward to, to meeting with every one of them and, and uh, building my relationship with them. Um, it's about them. Um, I know I, I'm at the role of head coach, but it's really about those players and those young men. Being one of them myself um, in the past, um, with great people, see see a lot of great former teammates and brothers here with me. Um, you know, I, I know the importance of uh, of a good coaching staff. Uh, being able to learn from some great men like Lavelle Edwards and his coaching staff, and being able to share that family atmosphere that we had when I played, and uh, that's what I know, and that's what I plan to to, to do here at BYU. Um, I'm very grateful and honored to be in this position. I wouldn't be able to do it without the people that have influenced my life and my career. And um, that's everybody. I mean, I, I am the product of a lot of sacrifice from so many different people in raising me as a BYU fan when I was young and supporting me when I was a player at BYU and also afterwards as, in my career. And those people are family to me, and I look forward to uh, getting to meet more people getting to embrace the, the past that I know and uh, also embrace the current and work all together one direction with this team and with this fan base, Cougar Nation. I'm excited. So I'm looking forward to that, and I wouldn't be able to, to do all these things if it weren't for the support of my family. Um, raised me the right way, and uh, my, my parents, my siblings, um, 
I have a bunch of cousins too, so uh, you know, all, all my cousins, my official and not unofficial cousins, thank you. But uh, just, just proud to be part of this family. I've never left. I've always been part of BYU, always bled blue. But I've learned a lot of things along the way and have met some great people. And I look forward to bringing that, my experiences in the last 15 years and establishing a, a program where these young men can thrive and uh, experience a lot of the things that I had back in my time. Thank you. We'll take some questions now. Both Kalani and I, you can intermingle them, but we'll, we'll try our best to take the ones. Lauren has the mic, so you can bring it to you. Kalani, welcome, first of all. Jared Lloyd from the Daily Herald. But just want to ask, first of all, just what have the last two and a half weeks been like for you? What's the journey been over these last you know, couple of weeks? Well, b before I start that, I need to thank um, my most uh, important assistant coach, and that's my wife, Timberly, and um, our three children. I need to... Before anybody starts, I mean, I wouldn't be anywhere without their support and uh, a lot of sacrifice. And so, yeah, I, um, the last, last uh, the process has been really exciting for me and my family. And, um, you know, but I, I'm very thankful to my wife and my children and, and my family. So before we start, sorry, can you ask the question again? I, I don't want to get in trouble, but I want to make sure that, to thank the right people. <laughs> Well, just talk about the journey, just the, the last couple of weeks as you've gone through this process and, and to get this position. It's been awesome. I, I think that um, my relationship with Tom has been, has been great, and we've been able to communicate throughout that, this time. And, um, you know, I, I, I enjoyed every part of it, and I'm thankful for the way it ended especially. But uh, just to be in, in the mix with a lot of different names that were out there, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be, be, uh, be here. I'm, I mean, like I said, I'm a BYU guy, and so this is, this is exciting for me and my family. And... Um, I share it with all my brothers here in, in the room and those that are not here right now. I, it's it's going to be awesome. I'm Jeff Call, Desert News. Coach, uh, how's the process of assembling your staff going, and what kind of offense and defense would you like to run here at BYU? Well, we're going to have a staff that's um, going to be able to recruit, and we're going to be able to be in line with um, myself and, and Tom, how we think about what's the best thing for, for these players. And so... Um, I can't give you the names or anything, but that we've been working on on establishing a staff right now, and um, yeah, so looking forward to getting the right guys that, that know exactly what we're about here at BYU, and and um, you know it's going it's to go, it's going to be a, a longer process than right now. Paul Nelson with KSL News Radio. Tom, you mentioned on Saturday that Kalani will be able to maybe add something special when it comes to recruiting. Kalani, what do you think you bring to the recruiting table that maybe BYU hasn't had in the past? Well, I, I recruit. That's 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 part of a coach's job is to recruit, and um, recruiting is everything in in football. But it's important to recruit good young men that fit what we're trying to accomplish here at BYU. And uh, being through that and living living the uh, BYU life when I as a player and student athlete, um, I think I give some credibility for you know what's out there. And, and we have a lot of good young men that have graduated and played football at BYU that uh, are living proof and walking advertisement for what you can get from BYU, and, and I look forward to, to working on recruiting. Lonnie, Rod Zundel, KSL Channel 5. When you left BYU as a player and, and got really thick into your coaching career, was it always in the back of your mind saying, this BYU job, if I could become the head coach, I will have arrived? I was doing that when I was eight years old. <laughs> so uh, I, think, I think it's important that, that um, you know, I was able to voice my opinion and say, why don't they give the bottle of okay a little bit more? And, Vice at Gamma should do more than this. And, you know, I, I, Leon White, I, I like him blitzing a lot. So I, I know all the names and the guys that I grew up a BYU fan. So I was uh, voicing my opinion and, and um, from day one. So I think that uh, I think everybody that bleeds blue, that's how you live. Whether you're a football player or not, uh, you want to be involved with it. And so my job isn't to tell them what to do because I was one of those guys that <laughs> were, you know, having some criticism. My job is to make sure that they rise and shout and they're, they're cheering. That's my job. Well, yeah. I mean, I will work together with 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 our with our uh, our players. But yeah, it's the the important the important part is to be entertaining. But you know, there's a lot of things that we can learn along the way, and uh, a lot of things that I learned that uh, when I was a player here, and and most of it is just keep rolling with what we got going on at BYU. One of my partners from our father is the 
just want to say that we're very proud of what you've achieved in, in the Apple uh, Polynesia community. Can you uh, cite three examples that you consider to be the top three priorities of your administration as the new coach? Well, if I asked you, is it more important to be a father or a son or a husband, um, it's hard to, to dictate which one is most important. So my, my job is to, you know, expect our guys, demand them to be excellent in everything, you know. And so I think if we live in, in, in excellence, it all reflects on what you do. Um, it's hard to prioritize uh, time because if that was the case, then we would be, you know, some of us would be more inclined with Candy Crush and things like that than what actually we spend with our, with our family. So uh, for me, I want to be great in everything. And with, this, with these players, I want to be great in everything. And I think that if you strive to do that, the rest will follow. John Kuhn, Utah Valley 360. Um, BYU's had a tradition of having a high-powered offense. Uh, as head coach, how, how will the offense look under, under your staff? Will there be any changes from what we've seen in the past? Or will things stay fairly similar? We're going to be a balanced team. We're going to, we're going to run the ball. And we're going to throw the ball, you know, and, and try not to punt as much on offense. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, defense, we're going to be, uh, we'll be aggressive, um, you know, and that's, that's going to be our, what we're going to hang our, our hat on. And that's, uh, I can't go any more than that. I know that we need to establish the line of scrimmage and we need to own the trenches. And that's what we're going to try to do and, and as we just piece together our, our uh, identity. But we want to be well balanced on offense and aggressive on defense. Kareem Copeland from the Associated Press. Uh, your thoughts on independence and the challenges that come with that? Well, I've watched uh, Tom put together the schedule in, in, in uh, you know, as independent school and, and a program, and I've been really impressed with the schedule that we have. And so the opportunity that we have as a team to go into the, to go versus these opponents that we have on our schedule this year, I'm fired up for it. And so if, if uh, we keep getting some, some tough opponents like we have and keep working the way that I've seen Tom work the schedule, then yeah, let's do it. Dana Green with ABC4. Um, for a question for Tom. Can you talk a little bit about, more about the process of finding Kalani as your head coach, and was he the first man you made an official offer to? The process began, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the week, <coughs> with talking to as many of the premier, premier LDS coaches in the country, whether they were head coaches or assistant coaches or coordinators. And uh, through that process, I was able to understand a lot about what they had to give and what they, how they would see the program. It's interesting to, uh, I'm not really doing this all throughout uh, my, the last couple years. Um, I, I, I sometimes maybe get a feeling about how it is from our fans, but it was really interesting to see how it felt from legitimate coaches in the profession that were LDS and that watched the program like Kalani. So from that process, I was able to learn things that I didn't know. And so the process kind of distilled through, and uh, I'm not gonna talk about who I talked to or what we talked about, but the most important thing is this guy sitting right here is our head coach. And that's what it comes down to. And uh, it, it, some of the things that I learned I'm going to say, and we've already talked about this in the last couple of days, Kalani, how are we going to address this? And we look at each other, and we start talking and having a conversation, and he's got great ideas. They're different. They're different than the way we've done things in the past. And uh, we're just going to go to work. We've already, we've already started going to work. We're going to continue down that line and work out the pathway for the future. This is a new era in BYU football. It's the dawning of a new day in BYU football. Whenever you start with a new head coach, things change. There are some things in this program that will remain the same. There are some things that he grew up on, being a football fan, being a football player at BYU, being a graduate assistant coach. So he's been in a lot of capacities here. Some of those things will bring back. Some of them have been a common thread from Lavelle all the way through to Kalani. And we're not going to throw everything out and start over. There's some richness in this program. We're going to keep that and add to it. Darnell Dixon, the Daily Herald. Kalani, you're a defensive coordinator. You've been that most of your career. Do you intend to be the defensive coordinator for BYU and the head coach, knowing the unique challenges that the head coach has, or, or is that still being decided? That's still being worked out. I mean, I, I, I 
am a defensive-minded uh, coach in the last uh, decade or so as a coach. But, you know, if you're a great fan, you know that I played on the offensive side and as a fullback. You know, not, not in the spotlight a lot, but I, I have an offensive mind and I, I learn offensively. But I think it helped me along as, as a defensive coordinator, as a defensive coach. And so I, I plan on being on both sides and being able to see how we establish our staff and, and what we can, you know, work with as far as who's going to be making play calls and things like that. But that will be worked out in the next little bit. My goal is to get the best recruiters out there first and, uh, and, and guys that can help our, our young men in the program right now. What were your impressions as you watched the Las Vegas Bowl a couple days ago? I was impressed with the, with the fight, you know, in our young men. Um, just, just to drive. They, they turned the whole momentum of the game. It was really impressive. And I, you know, just hoping that everybody could stay healthy during that time and then that we can get, get to work with it. But, yeah, I thought it was an entertaining game. Those games are, I mean, that's, you're never out of it, you know, and, and, and they proved it. And um, it, was, it was fun to watch. But I, I was really impressed with the guys on the team. And I saw a lot of leaders take, take control of the game and uh, how they were able to sw just swing the momentum quickly after that first quarter. It was really impressive to watch. Kalani, having your former coach and the architect of the program sitting over here, Lavelle Edwards, what does that mean to you just both emotionally and also, you know, is that sense of responsibility taking over the program he kind of constructed here? Yeah, I've, I've talked to Coach Edwards uh, quite a bit, and um, Coach Edwards has been a huge part, a huge influence in my life. And so um, I'm going to lean on him heavily on, on a lot of things, you know, with, with the program. And, and um, you know, I, I, very thankful for Lavelle and, and for everything that he's done for me. Uh, helped, you know, motivate me to go on a mission, which was huge for me. And so uh, there's a lot of things that, that, that I've learned from Coach Edwards, and I continue to, uh, you know, bug him about a lot of things as well, especially now in this role. Uh, Dick Harmon, Deseret News. Uh, Kalani, could you tell us, uh, from the time that you were hired, could you give us some estimation of how many phone calls you have made to players uh, potential recruits, mm -hmm. maybe potential staff members. Is there a number you could put on that? I can't put a number on it, but there's a lot. You know, I, I reached out to, uh, like I said, we have great young men on this team, and I look forward to, you know, building my relationship with them each individually. And so I plan on meeting with them. I've I've reached out and spoken to quite a number of them, but um, I plan on meeting with each of one, each of them in the next you know couple of weeks. Some are out of town, but. Um, just want to hear their feedback and get to know them um, more about them than anything, just who they are as a person and, and uh, get to know them. I think that that's going to be huge for my role as a coach to interact with them in that, that personal level. Um, recruiting never stops. So I've been recruiting since first got became a coach, so it never ends. So I that, hope that answers the question. Tom, you mentioned this after the official uh, introduction, during the official introduction on Saturday. But Kalani, you've seen this rivalry from both sides, you know, from the day you were born. And your team now has lost five in a row to your arch rivals. So I'm sure a lot of the fans want to know, saying, listen, this has got to be important to you because it has deeper meaning to you. Can you just talk about what that rivalry means to you and how you want to stop that streak? Well, uh, that's the second game, so I'm not really focused on that game. But it's, <laughs> trust me, that, that, that's a, you know, you don't have to say much about the rivalry other than I've experienced both sides of it and it's been really fun for me, you know, being a player here. But uh, the rivalry is so close where so many family members, I mean, I had an older brother that played at Utah when I was down here at BYU and we have a lot of close friends um, that interact and, and we know each other back when I played and also right now currently, you know, so the, the rivalry speaks for itself. Um, it's fun, you know, being on the other side, I just think that there's a lot of similarities between the fan bases, but um, more importantly, they're really passionate about their team. And I look forward to building, you know, good sportsmanship with, with great competition. But yeah, streaks are meant to be broken, and so I hope that we can, we can get to that as soon as we can. Dana Green, ABC4. Uh, you're only 40 years old, one of the youngest head coaches in the country. Uh, how, never had head coaching experience, especially at this level. Mm -hmm. How have guys like Kyle Whittingham, Gary Anderson prepared you for this job? been huge but first of all when I turned 40 this year I thought I was old and so now I get become the head coach and now I'm young so it's great to be young again <laughs> so I'm, I'm fired up to be young considered young so uh yeah thank you for that um you know my experience I mean I've, I've been with coach coach Whittingham when he was a first first as a head coach his first time 
And I've seen and learned from a lot of things from Coach Anderson. So they've been huge influences to me. But um, I've had really good men around me as coaches um, from my days as a, as, a, as a youth, you know, growing up through playing sports and playing football. So I've seen, I've seen a lot of good men. And, and they've been a huge influence on me, specifically with football uh, and the organization part. I've been, I've been able to see firsthand from Kyle and from Gary. And I, I mentioned that I, I'm very grateful to them, you know, and, and um, I'm proud to be, be from that, that coaching tree, which came from also Coach Edwards. And so uh, it's great to be back and great to be, you know, install a lot of things that I saw that, that worked where, where we were at and uh, hope, you know, hope and, and plan on, on doing some great things here. Uh, Ryan Comer, Standard Examiner. Everyone seems to agree that your recruiting is, is your, your forte. How do, you, how do you plan to recruit those kids that are on the fence trying to decide between BYU and Utah, given that they're in the Pac-12, they've established the success that they've had. How, do you, how can you recruit against that? Well, because BYU is a special place. And when I look a young man in the eyes and I look at his family and his, his parents and his family, I can tell them that I'm living proof that this is a special place. Um, like I said, there's a lot of young men that go through this place and, 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 and it changes their life. There's a lot of guys here and out throughout the world that have experienced what I had and so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build on that. It's a special place. It's unique. And uh, good things can happen for you if you come to the school. So uh, recruits, get ready because, you know, I'm living proof. I'm going to look in the eyes. And I'm, I played here. I lived this life. I met my beautiful wife here. I made great friends, brothers for life here. And so this is a great place for you if you want to be part of that. You know, so that's, that's a selling point. And, yeah, I mean, let's go. I want to get recruiting. And. I want to get working on this stuff, so if we can wrap it up quickly, I'd love to go talk to those young men. <laughs> you heard him. <laughs> Any other questions? Now, this one uh, is for Tom, um, Dick Harmon, Deseret News. Tom, this is kind of a crazy world in college football with the uh, amount of money being thrown around, and you're in that world. Uh, what can be done to enhance uh, the hiring and assistants and coaches, and are you on target to increase that to what you can? Yeah, the answer to that is yes, Dick. Uh, speaking with Kalani, as we discussed this job, that was one of the things that we spent a long time on. It's really critically important that you get the right guys on that staff. And so part of the reason that Kalani's not a head coach is that we need to be able to put – staff members around him, and that's what he's telling me. So he's been already pulling on my sleeve. We've had great discussions about it, and we have been able to step up, and we feel good about the direction that we're going, and it's, it's, this is daily multiple conversations already about what we can do and where we can go and how we can do it, and I feel good about that. Kareem Copeland from Associated Press. Uh, Tom, this is for you. Uh, speaking of being a young head coach, first time, were there any concerns for you there? And if so, what assuaded those? Um, yeah, I, obviously there's a whole realm of possibilities if you're looking at an open job where it's not, say it's not BYU. But when it's BYU, you have a, a narrower uh, pool of candidates. And so um, we're, we're not going to have that opportunity to look at people that are uh, in, the, in the business for a long, long time. But there's many coaches in, that I've known throughout the years. I've had incredible experiences being around first-year assistant coaches, coordinators, and head coaches. I know how difficult it is because I was a first-year head coach without having um, that experience and didn't really do well. So that's really a benefit to Kalani <laughs> because I can sit with him and we can talk about the things that will be coming his way, that he will be seeing that will be difficult for the first time. So yeah, I, I, I was aware of that, but his, the pros and cons having to do with anybody, his pros far outweighed the cons. And that number, that number of an age, it really is a number, 40 years old. I, I love what he says, and I, I mean, if we, if we put a label on, on ages, most people in this room wouldn't have been able to accomplish what they have if people told them, you can't do it because you're too young, you're too short, you can't shoot. In athletics, you just go for it. And I feel that the qualities of leadership, personality, 
the way he loves kids, all those things are going to give him an advantage where there may be some difficulty or challenges with some of the other things that everybody's aware of that you have to learn through experience. There'll be some hills and some valleys along the line, and he and his staff, me and my staff, and all of Cougar Nation will lift him up. These brothers will be there for him. They're already lining up, uh, buoying him up, and there's a lot of people that will be here to take away those issues. Mitch Harper, 1320K fan. Uh, Coach, what's the goals and the vision that you had that you said to, to Wor Kevin Worthen and, and Tom uh, to, to sell yourself to get this job? Probably hard to put it in one statement, but um, you know the experience I, I talked about earlier, the experience that I had as a, as a young man here at BYU and, and, and uh, under Coach Edwards, um, the, the culture that we had then, um, the brotherhood and the family atmosphere, that's what I want to build on and um, embrace what, what Coach Mendenhall and his staff has done. They've done a great job. And so I, I, I want to embrace all of BYU, everything. It's not about the old school and all that stuff. I want to be old school and updated, all that stuff. But I want to also be current, which means that if we're all BYU, that's all that matters. And so I want to embrace everyone. And I know that, um, you know, as a coach, I understand this is, this is tough, but I'm not doing it by myself. You know, I'm going to lean on a lot of, lot of guys, a lot of experience out there. Tom being one of them, all the guys on the coaching staff that we're looking at, and a lot of my brothers that are here and, 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 and in the community, and also, you know, Coach Edwards is there. So it, the first thing I'll tell you is that I'm not doing it by myself, and I'll do it with a lot of advice and a lot of, um, you know, recommendations from people that are around the program, and, uh, you know, all of us doing it together as a group. That's, that's I think, it's going to make this place special. Kalani, how are you, man? How you doing, Gordon? Um, we know you're a nice guy. We know you're, uh, you know, personable and fun to talk to and all that stuff. But uh, what's your coaching style? Because you got, you're, you got, a, you're a bit of a bad man, aren't you, when it comes to coaching? And talk to us a little bit about how you, how you plan on going about that. I'm gonna be myself, you know, and so. Um, yeah, I got a, I got a little mean streak in me, but it's about passion. You know, I'm 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 excited. I, I'm really I'm more positive than anything. I want to I want to see guys excel, and I'm going to demand that they they do as best as they can, and then I'm going to help them every every way I can to get to allow them to reach their goals. And so, um, appreciate you saying I'm a bad man. I I like that, but um, you know I, I think there's times to be. Uh, I think I think. Humility and meekness is really important, um, but there's times to get nasty, times to get tough. But just remembering who you are as you play this game, um, I think that's really important for us as a, as a team and as a unit. And uh, I think that we're gonna, you know, we'll make a lot of people proud of the way we play on the field and off. Hey, Kalani, Salt Lake Tribune. Uh, you. Uh, you have, are no stranger to media, but this is your first time kind of being the face of a program. Uh, what, what's that like so far? What's, how's this experience treating you? It's been great. It's been humbling. You know, I, I, like I said, I've, I've, I've received tons of support and love from so many different people, and um, it's been really humbling for me. So I, I, I want to take this thing and run with it, you know, and let's get, get to work. I mean, that's, I want to get to work really bad, and that's that's the I want to get this thing rolling. And so I'm I'm fired up. I'm excited. Met some of the players today. Um, you know, ready ready to get working, man. That's that's all I can help explain. I mean, that's yeah, that's fired up. Let's get ready to go. And what's been the reaction? Uh, you know, as a coach who has uh, Tongan heritage, mm -hmm. to be you know the first head coach to break through is is that something you've heard a lot of excitement about? Yeah, I've, I've I've been I'm proud of my heritage and where I come from, you know, and that's that's uh, important to me. But I'm also proud of being a member of Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. I'm also proud of um, being a, a good person and a good friend. And I try to, I have a lot of different roles. I just more proud of my coaching ability that I've learned from throughout the years from so many different influences. I just happen to be Tongan, which I'm really proud of as well. So, um, yeah, that's it's important to me, but it's. It's just part of who I am. Coach, do you have a timetable when you plan on getting this staff piece together? As soon as possible. Yeah, I want to get going on it quick and want to get working. 
So this is kind of taking time away from talking to those guys. <laughs> Zach Hick and ESPN 960. Coach, what do you think is the biggest difference between your time at BYU as a player and now uh, that you become the head coach? I don't know all the details, uh, but I, I can tell you that I appreciate um, and I, from from my distance, you know, where I was uh, the rival school, I've, I've actually been a fan of what you know the coaches have done and what Coach Mendenhall established here. And so uh, I don't know all the little details, but we'll work through it. I'll talk to a lot of the players, and we'll we'll start to establish a, a culture that I know <laughs> that's important, and we'll work with already what's been established, what's been built. Brandon Gurney from the Desert News. Have you been able to talk with Bronco Mendenhall? Have you been able to sit down with him, maybe, or any interaction at all since you've been? Yeah, I've, I've communicated with him. Um, you know. We, we, we've uh, texted back and forth. Look forward to talking to him. And uh, yeah, that he's, a, he's a really good young, he's a really good man. He's young too. I think he was 40 when he got the job too. But um, I look forward to talking to him and just, just like getting to know everything about this program that I've missed in the last 15 years. And so a lot of that is talking to the players that have been here, also those that have been under that regime. And so it's important to me to, to, to make sure I cover it all and talk to everyone. Anything Mendenhall imparted to you that's notable? Um, there's there's things that, that I think it's between me and Coach Mendenhall, and yeah, and then we'll see how when when uh, we establish the program how it goes. Last question. Mm -hmm. right. Kalani, some schools uh, have national championship or bust as a goal or conference championships, not being in a conference, if you prioritize your goals on the football field, everything else aside, what would they be? I want to win, yeah. I want to win. I want to get the uh, get our guys to play and function out our best. And I think when we do that, we, there's a lot of really great players here. And so I, I think that as we start working together, they're they very used to winning here. So it's been that way for a long time. And so I'm looking forward to continuing that tradition.